So the Seahawks trying to beat the Niners three times. They are nine and a half point underdogs. The Chargers now two and a half point favorites against the Jags. The Dolphins, that line started at 10 and a half, now up to 13 and a half. The Vikings uh, are giving three to the Giants. And the Ravens, that's now, it started at six and a half. It's up to nine and a half. The best game could be the Giants and the Vikings. Now, you may not want to tune in to the Giants and Vikings because maybe you don't look at them and go, they could go far in the playoffs or they're exciting. But if you want a game that's going to be competitive, I mean, that could be 21-21 going into the fourth quarter. And you would think, with the line being a three-point spread, that it'll be a close game. You know, the Dolphins and Jags, or uh, the uh, Chargers and Jags, that's a, you know, point spread-wise, two and a half. That could be a great game. Not great teams, but great games. And there's a difference with that. You know, Buffalo Bills are a great team, but that game against the Dolphins, probably not going to be a great game. The Seahawks against the Niners, although I, it's weird. I, I feel like if the Seahawks hadn't beaten the Niners both times and going into this game, I would like their chances more for some reason. And I still think the Ravens are going to hang around with the Bengals, even without Lamar Jackson. I don't know why. It's just a weird feeling that it could get ugly. And people are forgetting the Cincinnati Bengals are without two of their starting offensive linemen here. And that was the problem last year at times, and certainly to start this year when they started out 0-2. Yes, Todd? Lamar Jackson doesn't seem to think it's going to go well without his services at quarterback. Yeah, there was a, there was a quote that he had. And let's see. Let me give you the exact thing. I uh, mentioned, you know, what he has, the uh, PCL grade two sprain, borderline of a strain three. I've never had a PCL injury. I've had ACL, MCL. There is still inflammation surrounding my knee, and my knee remains unstable. I'm still in good spirits as I continue with treatments on the road to recovery. Then Lamar Jackson goes on to say, I wish I could be out there with my guys more than anything, but I can't give 100% of myself to my guys and fans. And then he follows by saying, I'm still hopeful we still have a chance. <laughs> no, he, did, he didn't say he was just, I'm hopeful. I'm, he says, I'm still hopeful we still have a chance. But we'll probably get crushed. You got me point. <laughs> that, that is not exactly, you know, words of inspiration. Like, did you hear what Lamar said? Let's go. We you know, still have a chance. Yeah, Seaton. Is there a, is there a comma in there? No. Like, like I'm yeah. still hopeful, comma. Like, we still have a chance. There's no comma. There's uh, No. Uh, I'm still hopeful we still have a chance. End quote. Yeah, Paul. Isn't that a situation where you over-support the team that's on the field? Say, I have no doubt that yes. our team is going to go out there and get it done. Yes. Lamar. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're like, whew, without me, good yeah. luck. Yeah. <laughs> They got no shot. I mean, I hope we have a chance. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Uh, you go back to when he rejected that five-year, $250 million deal earlier in the season, and it was guaranteed $133 million. And I think that was the sticking point, because if you guarantee it, it feels like Lamar Jackson would have signed that. Now, what do you do? He's been banged up the last couple of years. You're going to probably franchise him. And then you end up paying him, what, $40 million, something in that ballpark for one year. Do you want him for five more years with this style? It almost feels like we look at running quarterbacks the way we do running backs. There's like a five-year window here. And then you have to make that decision. Do you want to sign them up for five more years? This is what I don't understand, and I was never good at math, but if I'm a quarterback, I want to get in after the third year. I don't want to wait until after the fifth year, even the fourth year, because the sooner I get in, the sooner I'm going to be able to renegotiate, sign another contract extension. I mean, that's what's going to happen with Patrick Mahomes. You know, we looked at the deal, and it's like, oh, my God, it's uh, half a billion dollars. It's going to be a team-friendly deal. It's going to be a great deal for both. He's already getting a couple of years into that contract, now he's going to be able to sign another contract extension. If I'm Lamar Jackson, get in. Now I'm in after three years. Now, I, now I'm already two years in now with that next contract. You bank $60 million? That's what I don't understand. I know everybody wants it guaranteed. 
And this started with Kirk Cousins. When I came on this show and I had a source say, be ready for this. Kirk Cousins going to get the first guaranteed contract. Everything is guaranteed. All the money. And I went, wow. And then everybody, it changed everything. And then Deshaun Watson got $230 million guaranteed, all guaranteed. And I think Lamar Jackson looks at that and probably goes, why is $133 million guaranteed? And you're, you know, everybody has that sort of that same reaction to this. Isn't that enough money? Or $133 million? Okay. Incentives, you're still going to make that money? You're two, you're, you'll be two years quicker into that next contract. But if I'm Baltimore... And I love the Lamar Jackson story. And it's not my money. It's not personal. I don't want to sign him for a five-year deal now. Do I think he's using this as leverage? Do I think he's saying, I'm not going to risk this? I don't know. I, I, I have to be fair to him that he's got a knee injury, hasn't played in a while. But could he play? He says he won't be 100%. Well, you get to this point, who's 100%? Can you play? Can you play without risking serious injury? And, and if that's the case, fine. You know, these, th- these two parties approached this, and Baltimore gave him what they thought was a good offer. He turned it down. And now it's been sort of lingering there. And then he didn't play well this year. And he's banged up, and he's banged up again. And this is the style that he plays. Do I want to sign that up? No, long-term. No, I don't. Kyler Murray, don't want to sign that long-term deal. I, I need to wait a year. I said I would wait five years. I would wait the entire contract with Lamar Jackson. I would have waited. I would have said to Kyler Murray, no. No. You want to sit out? Sit out. But we have to see more from you. We want to see leadership from you. We want to see what you do in the second half of a season. We want to see what you do in the postseason. Lamar's won an MVP, and that's where it probably eats away and goes, Deshaun's making more. Why does Kyler Murray get that contract? Then you get caught up in all of this, and you start playing mind games, and sometimes you're playing the mind games with yourself. You got to come back from an injury. Do you want to sign him to that deal? I think they'll franchise him. But I wonder if his future is in Baltimore. Yeah, Paul. Can you imagine two years ago us on, on the air talking about the Ravens moving on from Lamar Jackson? It wouldn't even been a topic that anyone would talk about. Now it's a very popular topic. Two years ago, he was 11-4 and four as a starter, 26 touchdowns, 9 picks. The year before, he was MVP. And the past couple of years, his stats have cooled off. If you want to compare him, if you wanted to, to, to Cam Newton, in Cam Newton's fifth year in the league, he was league MVP. He went to the Super Bowl. He was 15-1. and one. After that year, his fifth year in the league, he made one Pro Bowl and one playoff appearance. Yeah. I'm sorry, check that. He After year five in the league, Cam Newton made zero Pro Bowls and had one more playoff appearance for Carolina. He's out of the league at 32. He says the, the knee injury is more serious than what people know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him at his word, but that doesn't help. Like, is this something that is always going to be there? Like, once you have one knee surgery or two or, you know, five or six like me, it stays with you the rest of your life. It's there. Now, he's trying to run away from guys who are trying to, you know, take his head off. But when you're that good a runner, you don't want to stop running because that's what you do so well. And you sort of have to go, all right, let's ride this out as long as we can. That style. And I would, I would have great trepidation here. As great as he is, it almost feels like he has to do more because he looks around. He's had running backs injured. He hasn't had great wide receivers. He's got a very good tight end. But I think he goes into a game thinking, I, I got to make something happen every single time. I am responsible for the offense. And doesn't want to go out there and play, doesn't want to risk. Does the contract have anything to do with it? I don't know how it doesn't have something, even if it's just lingering. Yes, Eden. Somebody on Twitter wondering if, Lamar Jackson was actually saying that he still has a chance that he could play. Not that the team stinks, but hey, I can't, I'm not 100%, but okay. I'm hopeful, like we, meaning like, you know how sometimes people talk about, they say like we, but it really means I. Yeah, okay. 
I wish I could be out there with my guys more than anything, but I can't give a 100% of myself to my guys and fans. I'm still hopeful we still have a chance. Maybe. <laughs> I thought he's been ruled out. Here's John Harbaugh being asked a question. <laughs> There's like an idea outside the building. I know you probably don't care about it, but that um, kind of connects like how long he's missed in his contract situation. Knowing what he's done for the franchise, how do you feel about him? Does that tick you off? Does it, does it hurt you at all? Or do you, do you have any sort of thoughts on that idea? <laughs> that's, that's a great question. You, you learn, I'll say, after all these years, I wouldn't say that things don't ever make you mad that you read or you hear. And people do speculate on different things. And sometimes, yeah, you kind of do, you go, man, I can't believe someone would say that or think that. But the, you try your best not to not to let it affect you emotionally. So all that other stuff just becomes kind of noise, and you just try to just put it out of your mind. I don't know if he answered the question. <laughs> and then you're laughing at a question like that. I don't know. <laughs> Seems a little serious there, what's going on. And look, a lot of people have speculated this. If, if you know, do I want to go out there? I'm not 100%. Could I go out there and play? Maybe. Or I could be 60. I'd rather have him at 60% than somebody who is 100%, his backups. But we're probably not going to see that.